Hey, this is Monroe Bishop. And this is Larry White. And welcome back to Tea with Monroe the podcast. Okay, honey. One second. I'm not in the camera here. I have to I have to be seen. We're good. Anyway, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. So glad you can join us. What's happening, honey? Mm, not much. Do you have anything more to tell everybody this week? What's going on with you? New developments and anything enlightening that's happened that has blessed your life, has aggravated your life? Anything? Yes, I got a new album in the mail today. Did you say album? Yes. What album? <laughs> I'm gonna be Nothing, no. I don't get it. Tell what? You get it. <laughs> You mean you got a new album in the mail today? I gotta think about that. <laughs> that went over my head. That's not funny. Yeah, I'll show you. Anyway, so the hot, hottest thing in my life, and I mentioned it last week, is my blonde hair. I have been getting so many compliments, so many DMs in my inboxes, just telling me how beautiful I look and how this is just gorgeous, how it just wraps my face and just you know yeah i get those dms when i shave <laughs> which is not very often hmm. anyway so um so several people asked me who did my hair and um it's sharina mm -hmm. sharina scott yes sharina scott. i would definitely sharina um uh, power scott Yes, and um, if you're in Houston, Texas, she's over into Vintage Park area. I will have her deets down in the, um, the the notes. That way you can get in touch with her if you want a good cut. I mean, she does everything. She does colors. You can see cut natural hair. I have natural hair, so she's really good with that. She does weave, perm hair, you name it. She does it. She's very, very good, and I just love what she's done in my hair. Since it was um, since I had the um, heart attack and wasn't feeling too good, my hair kind of took on a life of its own and um, wasn't doing me right, was doing me dirty. Mm. So I had to have somebody just give life back to it, and she did that for me. So Sharina, shout out, thank you, girl. And uh, yeah, so I give out her information um, in the show notes. So last week we talked about monogamy, and I got a lot of feedback on that. Did you have any anything to add? Just Based on what we left with when we left when we left off with monogamy, where we were, how you felt about it, any new developments, any changes of heart. Uh, since you're gonna allow me to have another wife, uh, <laughs> <let's> see, uh... <laughs> she better come correct. Okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's serious too. I, could you no, no, seriously no, tell us? No, no. I'm not gonna get mad. I, we cannot hold anything against each other on the podcast, like in therapy. We what will we say it here? It's a safe. This is a safe place. So if you feel like you want another wife, just go ahead and say that. We'll, 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 we'll talk about that. I'm not going to get mad. Uh, well, since you said that, uh, I don't want two crazy wives. <laughs> well, actually, it would be one because I'm not crazy. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. I, don't, I don't need one crazy wife getting crazy because of the other wives. No, no, thank you. I personally think, even though I would not do it, I think that I could actually have a second mm -hmm. wife in the house. Yeah, no. I could use the help. You, you can use the help, but it ain't going to be help to me. If <laughs> yes, I, it will, because you know you was fussing about the clothes on the bed. I would not, I'm not, be, able, I would not be able to use the help. <laughs> So, Just think yeah. about you would never do without of anything, eating, sex. Well, like I said, I know you need to help. You're so, lying. <laughs> anyway, monogamy is a personal choice. And definitely check out that episode last week, episode 58. It was a very good episode. And people have a different opinions about it, whether they choose to... Be monogamous and non-monogamous. I definitely think if you are a non-monogamous individual, that's something you definitely should uh, share with the person that you're with. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm serious um, because people think they're in monogamous relationships, but the person they're with are in a non-monogamous monogamous relationship. And that's not fair. Yeah, it's called cheating. Exactly. Yeah. Why are you moving my wine? Because I don't want it by me. Oh, you see, you tempted. I'm scared I'm wasted. Oh, yeah, he is pretty clumsy. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that. So this week we are going to dive, delve into pornography. Mm. And I'm trying to think why I chose pornography. 
I can't remember, but I just def I definitely thought it was a good relationship topic to discuss because um, something in my group. No, you know what? Let me back up, back up, back up before I even get on my topic, which is pornography. Last week I put in a group about uh, Topic Tuesday and I did get several requests and we're going to go ahead and just real quick just go over some of the things that some of the members in the group posted. If you're not part of my podcast group on Facebook, it is Tea with Mother Water Podcast. It is a private, secret, sacred group that you would have to reach out to me for me to add you to the group. And that's because we talk about some real adult-like stuff and we get very immature as well. So... Yeah, I've been in Facebook jail more times than you can count. Anyway, so Grace was like, let's talk about dra damaging rumors. How dra how damaging rumors are to one's lifestyle. You know, she's been dealing with some things lately. And just real quick, rumors, go. What about them? How they damage people's lifestyle. Well, rumors, um, you, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a commandment for that. So I'm really? gonna say, yeah. What's yeah, the commandment? Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, how would you Thou shalt not spread the rumors. No, uh, no, it's something about. Uh, I can't think of what is the commandments in my head right now. I can't think of. Them. So, Let me I'll look it up. It. While you're talking about, it, I look it up. But um, yeah, you just don't want to do that. It's not good to uh, to you know talk down somebody's name, and that's a way of doing it. I think. Uh, uh, you know, rumors um, is damaging. You, you, you cause get people killed. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. yeah, I think rumors are definitely, especially if you don't know that the rumor is true, and you're actually spreading stuff about someone that could um, potentially, gossiping. yeah, gossiping about people that you could potentially cause harm in their life or cause them to do harm in someone else's life. I mean. Let me tell you something. When I was in school, I was bullied relentlessly. And there were so many rumors going around about me. I mean, just horrible things that were said. And um, it did affect me all the way into my adulthood. And I, I just think that I think it's a very mean-spirited thing to do. And I think a person who spreads rumors, especially um, untrue rumors, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're not good people. I hear rumors about me, too. But they were all good. I, mine's one. I mean, it ruined my reputation. I mean, here I am. I'm 48, and I can tell you right now, I can count on my hand the friends that I truly were friends with in middle school. I don't have any good memories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was because, you know, different things were said about me, and I'm just like, I didn't bother nobody. Kids are cruel, though. They are yeah. cruel, and adults can be cruel as well. Yeah. And I just think, you know, you need to think twice about spreading things about people that are not true or even if they are true, especially us women talking about each other. I mean, we are women and you may not like the next woman, but just remember that you are a woman and you don't want to put something out there that you wouldn't want to put out about yourself. I just think it's, it's just crap. I think I lost my space. But anyway, stop spreading rumors. <laughs> Shoot. Little Oh yeah, what is that song? Spreading all these rumors. Found me every day. Culture, what's the name of the group? I forgot. But anyway. Um, Get away now. Okay, Grace came through again. Let's talk about social media bullies. I just can't stand these keyboard bullies. You talk the most trash through the internet, through your keyboard, through social media. But when you come time to come face to face, you have very little to say. I don't know what to say about social media bullies other than they're cowards. You got something to say, you got an issue with me, and it's a genuine issue we need to confront and talk about. Let's meet and talk about it. We grown. You know? Let me say this. I can give a, a rack's a rip about somebody saying something on Facebook. That's easy for you to say because you don't be you don't get attacked on uh, Facebook. Nah, I have been attacked on Facebook, but I don't care. Oh, that's right. That, I uh, all the time get attacked on Facebook, right. but I really don't care. I just know oh, well, this person is not paying a bill. This person is not uh, benefiting me in any, or any sort of way. This is not a client. This is not a customer. This is uh, this is. Um, not a really a friend for as I'm concerned. True. You know what I mean? Facebook so, friends are not always real friends. And so I don't really care. I mean, they they bring nothing to my life. 
Yeah, yeah, but you, but you know, social media is so prevalent now, and we get so emotionally wrapped up where it's actually. No, it, no, it, we don't. Okay, maybe you don't, but a lot of people do where it is dictating their lives. I mean, they actually live. I mean, people get upset for being unfriended, for. Yeah, I mean it's. I mean it's it's serious out here. So when you are a social media um, bully, it's crucial. I mean you yeah. you. We need to have some some emojis where you can throw blows through emojis because nobody has really come for me. I don't really bother with anybody, but if you come for me, I'm yeah. What she said anyway. Stop bullying, folks. Stop bullying. If anybody's bullying Grace or giving Grace a hard time, definitely stop it. I mean, um, yeah. That, that that's that, I think it goes hand in hand with rumors. I think it's just insensitive and it's very immature to do that so grace did say something else um i'm gonna save this particular topic for probably a podcast topic because a a, a, a segment a podcast episode because it's she's talking about health issues and chronic uh, illnesses that um affect certain people and i definitely um have some personal health issues that i uh, deal with um, on a regular basis and so I'm going to save that one for actually a topic so we're going to skip that one and we got Derek Williams here I hope this is a joke but he said can we talk about the different ways we prepare shrimp well, well Derek wants you to pick some good gumbo <laughs> that's okay duck. that's gumbo that's one what's another duck. way to prepare shrimp well, see duck is asking that's duck so duck is asking that for oh that's his nickname duck yes okay hey duck yeah, he 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 wants to know uh, different ways to prepare shrimp because he wants to put in his gumbo. Listen, uh, duck. There are several ways to prepare shrimp. There is gumbo, like Larry said. That's that rush real quick. You can boil it. Um, you can steam it. Um, I I've never baked shrimp, but I'm assuming that you can bake it. There's scampi shrimp. There's um, slap your mama it? shrimp. No, no, no. Stop, stop. You don't need to do this. This is a replay. Go watch the movie as far as gum. Why? He would tell you all about shrimp. Would you say shrimp? Shrimp. 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 Bubble. Bubble. Glass bubble. I'm going to go look at that because I vaguely remember him talking about that. But did he give you different ways to cook it? Ways to make them shrimp. All right, Doug. Go watch Forrest Gump. We ain't got time for this. Okay, here go Crumlin. What's Crumlin's real name? I can't. Tony? I don't know. Anyway, he said, let's talk about cheaters and why cheaters get mad when cheated on. And, you know, again, you have to be in, you have to be in the group. To because they're in the monogamous, I mean, a, a monogamous, monogamous relationship. Yeah. Watch the podcast, Crumlin. <laughs> watch the podcast. Listen to the podcast, Crumlin. And you can watch it too on YouTube, okay? Um... And he's all, and his biggest thing in the group is, and when I say cheaters, I'm saying women because men don't cheat. He is adamant that men do not cheat. I don't know what his philosophy is behind that, I but agree. shut up. I agree. No, you know, seriously, it's a philosophy tip. What is the philosophy? The philosophy is that men don't cheat because they aren't the no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, couldn't even, he couldn't even come up with nothing. Because no. <laughs> you know that straight bullshit. Y'all are, are the y'all are the we leaders, are the predecessors. Y'all are, are the virtual ones. And y'all are the cheaters. We are yeah, we are not virtual. You anymore. men are the ones that has families across town. Y'all are virtual. We are not. So we virtual or virtuous. Yes, that's it. <laughs> virtuous. So, Oh, I can't. We're virtual, okay. Yes. Anyway, Crumlin, listen to the monogamous episode. I, honestly, I think we need to do a podcast on cheaters because this is a very um, relevant topic that a lot of people bring up in the group. It's many facets to it. Many, it's so much to cheating. <laughs> so yeah, we need to do a podcast on that. But I think I covered uh, everybody. So if you have a topic you would like for us to discuss, email me at twithmonroe.com and then we will definitely address it. We'll either answer it here or we'll do a podcast on it. And I'm also thinking about probably doing a, um, a YouTube video when I get these topics that come up. That way we could save our podcast time for the actual podcast. Unless it's the actual topic. Anyway, pornography. What is... You know, I want to ask you... What was your first experience with pornography, if you have any? Can't remember. 
You know what mine was? What? Benny Hill. To me, it was. It was. Yeah, Benny Hill. But it was, but okay. But guess what? It came on eleven o'clock at night. It did in Florida, and our parents. Is it Benny Hill or Benny Hill? I thought no, it was Benny, Benny Hill. It's Benny, Benny Hill. Hill. Benny Hill is a, uh, 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 a preacher or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Benny Hill. Yeah, H-I-L-L. Benny, -L. Benny Hill would come on and I would actually, because I didn't have a TV in my room, I would actually wait till my mom, go to sleep. Well, I close the door because they go to their room a certain time. Yeah. And I would sneak up, go into the living room, turn the TV on. I watch it right there in front of my mom. She... Oh, your mom let you watch Benny Hill? Mama, that is so inappropriate. My mama had a different philosophy at the time, and, and when we was growing up, it was when she watching it, if she's watching it, we watching it. She didn't. Really but there's certain things you just don't watch with your kids, and and I that remember. Wasn't for and, and, but to me, it was because guess what? Because it it had that was her philosophy. It had nudity in. It. They didn't show well, nudity on TV back me, then. Let me say this: they didn't. Okay, you're right. They didn't show nudity, but. I watched Rated R. We had cable back then. I watched Rated R. Not when Benny Hill was out, you did not. We did. Yeah, was, that was. That's, you know, we had. What cable. year was that? Let me look it up. Because know. I think when Benny Hill was out, we were still we using rabbit cable. ears. You know what? You cable. always make it seem like y'all life was so much ahead cable. of everybody else's. Jeez. I'm telling you. I did not have cable when everybody else had rabbit ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. My mama. <laughs> she did it, huh? <laughs> We had cable when it first came out. <laughs> what well, was it, 81? We had cable in 81. Did, did cable come out in 81? I don't know. Because I, I know when, when cable did come out, my mom did have cable. Wait a minute, let me think here. My first cable uh, experience. Well, he died in 1992. Yeah. Let me see. Cable came out. That's what you need to look up. Cable. When cable come out? When it. When it <laughs> I brushed my teeth to that song. Benny Hill was from 1937 to 1992. So I guess it did cross the, it was a British show. Yeah. So I did, it did cross over the 80s. But again, in my mind, as a young, innocent young lady, it was something that I was not supposed to be watching. So in my mind, that was my first experience with per, with, per, with pornography. <laughs> and then when I got older, and don't act like nobody didn't do it. Sorry, mom, I'm gonna throw you out there. Just, you know how you go and you sneak in your mom's room and you get the video, the VCR cassette tape, thinking you finna watch a rated R movie. Hmm. Got a little more R than what you thought. Yes, yes, with a couple <laughs> little extra letters, X, X, and X. <laughs> so, I'm just like, what in the world am I watching? And you, and as, as a kid, I became obsessed with it. I would all, I ain't gonna lie, I was obsessed with porn. I was constantly trying to figure, and it's not the kind of porn that's out. Don't you know what? Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do me like that. Cause we look, we don't had conversations. Don't do me like that. Okay, I won't have that conversation. <laughs> but seriously, just think about it. Even though you claim you didn't watch porn, don't don't watch porn. Have never watched porn. I didn't say but that. just think about this. The porn that we used to see nice. long time ago is so vastly different. Than the porn that's out oh, now. That stuff was bad back in the day. I'm sorry. Well, it was bad because well, we wasn't exposed to we, sex like that. We probably thought it was worse than what it is. Just well, yeah, but but, but just day. thinking about it, just know, I'm just I just feel like it was a lot. It's a lot worse now. It's more fastest to to uh, porn. Yeah, uh, I think it's more commercialized now. You think so? Yeah, I mean, they did some. Gross stuff back then. They do some gross stuff now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm. so we got softcore porn. We got hardcore porn. I think softcore porn is the stuff that be on uh, HBO. Yeah, that's come on TV. Well, you see them doing going through the motions, but you never really see no entering. You don't even know if it's real. Or not. Oh right, they could have on tape or something, some little underwear they're covering I don't it. Know. Anyway, we got softcore, hardcore, abusive, and illegal porn, and and it's getting to the point now in society. Of course, child pornography. Oh, okay. Um, that, that's, that's not even porn. That should be like... Well, it is. It's because they, they do uh, harm children and have them doing things that are inappropriate. So, mm -hmm. what my point I'm trying to make at all this, all of these are considered... They're kind of lumped together where we like to believe it or not. And, and porn is considered actually the gateway to other things because now pornography is so prevalent that people are becoming addicted to it. And it's becoming a way of 
people functioning sexually or cannot function with sexually without porn. Mm. What do you think about that? Um, if a person can't perform sexually without porn, if they're watching probably too much porn, I would say uh, that's they're getting more they rocks off watching porn. Um, so, but I guess I guess porn could be used in different ways. I heard a couple was watching porn together. Well, how much porn? Let's just talk about the addiction, the aspect of it. How much porn is too much porn? Where you can't stop watching. Well, you're so desensitized to it, where you right. can't have a like, you can't have a healthy relationship with another same. person because of the porn addiction. It's the same thing. It's too much alcohol. Too no, much it's not. Alcohol, too much uh, mm -hmm. anything. No. Okay. In the, in certain aspect, it is it's an addiction, just like those, but it's different because sex, food addiction, sex addiction, food and sex are part of our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And if you get addicted to, to those, it is hard to overcome those issues. Like with marijuana or heroin, you can Absolutely. you can actually you you don't you don't say, well, we're gonna just do a little bit of heroin today, just you know, not to you don't need heroin. Heroin you can but go you through need food. but you need food and you need sex. Right. So you absolutely do need sex. Uh sex is part of the hierarchy. Well, well you need it when I mean, you, you may put like this. You may, it's, a, it's a part of your everyday. You may crave it. You may you, but you can live without it. Is what I'm saying. But well, okay, let's food. just think about That's the let's I mean. just think about the normal person in our everyday lives. We eat, we sleep, we breathe, we have relationships with people. Sex is a part of uh, is a part of that. So a person who is addicted to sex, it's not as easy for them to overcome that because you can't say sustain from sex and and because you, it's something that your body craves you so it's different than being addicted live, to a drug you can live without it, right? some people do monk some people no, do live no, without no, sex you, you're saying it as if you gotta have it or you would die can you live without sex I'm, if i have to i would have to if i was stuck on this darn earth but, but we're myself. not but we're not though if I have to, we're in an over sexualized society. How realistic is it I'm for in that, Western culture you, for us not that to? What you, that ain't what you're saying. I'm saying you. You said that's one of the hierarchies. I, I agree, but which are the top hierarchy that you have to have to live? Okay, I'm not talking about to that's, live. I'm just saying that sex is a part of our natural being as humans. It's a part of our. It's, it's I our, agree. It's a part of us. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. something. I mean, we got body parts. I mean, I have a clitoris. You have a penis. I mean, we want to have sex. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just have to know. Disclaimer: Sex talks makes him uncomfortable. No, it don't. It makes him uncomfortable on a mic. <laughs> from, from broadcasting. <laughs> but we're not talking about anything derogatory. We're uh, talking about people who are addicted to pornography, and it's not. A, it is not the same as being addicted to a drug that you can actually that you actually do not need to sustain to live sex is a part of our life okay so i agree next don't do that man <laughs> i agree i do agree i agree Oh my we gosh. Need, we need sex. We're going to do this right afterwards. We're gonna go. I think is <laughs> sex is very unhealthy. Uh, I mean, it's not sex, but pornography can be very unhealthy and you can get um, addicted to it. So you definitely, I don't have all the answers. I'm I not think, a doctor. I think, so I think pornography can be, well, we, we're taught that it is bad for you. We, we're taught that we're taught Did that we? it's not yeah it's not it's supposed to not be good for you supposed to be unhealthy it's, it's supposed to be sinful it's supposed to be um it's a lot of things that that's wrong with it but i do think it could be something therapeutic in a way of it could be depends on what has happened to somebody you know mm -hmm. and it could be damaging too uh, uh you never know what has happened to somebody but i think anything too much is bad and i think uh you know us in America are very like uptight as far as sex. You know, even I'm, I'm a You perfect, think so? I think I'm we're more perfect. sexualized than ever. I mean, everything, music, everything sexual. is about sex. We are more sexual. They even have children having sex, uh, teenagers having sex on TV shows now. And so, I understand that. We are more, but they've been doing that in Europe since the, the 90s. I'm talking about us over here. You know, I'm, Europe is a little bit more progressive I'm, I'm, than we are. Well, you proved my point. My point was. I think here in America, mm -hmm. we are more uptight about sex. 
than other parts of the, you know, of other countries. You we know, were. European nations, they are, they are not, uh, they don't care. You know, it's not, they, they have their, they can be given the news new. They have that out there. So, you know, oh, yeah, I did see a, a news um, it's a okay. segment where it's, they were naked doing the weather report and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. rating. They won't rating. So that's what they do. Oh my God, what would I do if I see my, my news guy, my news lady just butt naked giving me the weather? You wouldn't be looking at the news. news. <laughs> 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 I'm like, okay, well, it's raining somewhere. Be cold. <laughs> you mentioned a few minutes ago about um, couples watching porn. What, how, what is your opinion on that? Um, I don't think that's bad. I think that could be all right. Uh, they, you know, they may need something to get the juices flowing, or it may be that. They are just, you know. I think it go. I think it could be really good. Better for them to as an watch it than, than them not. Right. I think it would be really good as in terms of enhancing an already healthy sex life. Right. Or it can go really bad if you lose sight of the goal of watching a porn in a sex life that is not that healthy. Mm -hmm. And it could be very dangerous because I know for me personally, if I felt like someone that I was with needed to watch porn in order to be with me, I'll be like, I will feel some type of way because mm -hmm. to me, porn is unrealistic. Right. It's a fantasy. It's not real. And, and our, and it's an unrealistic expectation for anyone who watches porn to put on their partner because well, we that. don't necessarily perform those extravagant acts right. in our everyday sex life. So I think it just depends on where you are and what your goal is. I think, I think they will need counseling for that situation right there. If, they can't, uh, if they have to do all that, they need some counseling. Do all what? Need porn to yeah, get the so relationship, uh, get get the sex? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, let's, let's, again, it just depends because we, we've need, watched porn, let's be need, honest. They need sex, I don't, I don't know, stomach. They need sex <laughs> to that counsel or something. But we don't need I it have no idea what you're talking about. to jumpstart anything. I, I it's just I like, we just like watching it. I don't know who we is. <laughs> So I don't know what you're talking about. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I personally, I'm not an avid porn watcher, mm. but I have watched porn. I will watch porn. You were I don't, addicted, were you? I'm not addicted to porn. You was. You think so? You said it. I did not say it. Did <laughs> I say that? You just said it on the mic. I said I was addicted. I said I'm not an avid watcher you said of porn. When I was a kid. Oh, when I was a kid because I, I didn't understand. Addicted. Oh my God, it's not the same thing. She <laughs> oh my gosh. Fast forward to 20 years later. Okay, how about that? 20. Okay. How many years? <laughs> you know what he's just trying to pick up because he don't want to talk about pornography so right. he's just trying to deflect right now but I'm not going to let him catch me when I was younger I was a, a kid addicted where I just wanted to watch it because it was new to me I didn't understand it what are they doing and, yeah. it made, and it made my body respond in different ways that I didn't understand because I had not had that talk with anybody right. so when I say addicted that's what I mean but now as an adult You're I've never that. I've never been addicted. I've watched porn occasionally in, in my previous yeah. marriage and in this marriage. I've watched porn. Know. Who did you watch this with? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What are you saying? What are you trying to tell me? I watched porn, baby. And I oh need it. Goodness. And I need it to get on you. No, I'm just playing. But, but, <laughs> but seriously. Yes. <laughs> Outside of him, let him be delusional and be behind his in his box <sighs> and afraid to talk. I do like porn. I do. I don't like it to the extent where I need it to be sexually gratified by my husband. But I like it. Sometimes, you know, you 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 up late and you just like, well, baby, let's watch a video or whatever, and mm -hmm. and no, just what, what you and just enhance that already freak me. You know that freak. You know what I'm saying? Just get it. On 10, mm. just get it going. You know what I'm saying. And I'm just going to put it out there. I personally like certain types of porn. I don't like all porn. Because some of that porn, when you go into these stores, mm -hmm. oh my oh, gosh. Stores. Let's talk about fetishes. Okay. Since you're so scared okay. to talk about 
What's up with the fetish? Fetish is like you have porn for people who like to boo boo on each other, <sighs> pee on each other, <laughs> swallowing. I would not watch a swallow porn. I just some things that I just I don't watch any of this I type think of porn. That's all porn. They swallow. No, no, you're right. I don't that's think so. Right. With all that gushing, mm-mm, yeah, that's, 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 that's just nasty. Anal porn I don't watch. Well, that's like, because I do like gay porn, whether it's male gay or uh, female yeah, gay. My preference is female gay porn. Way. I really like it because I think women are more... I don't like no porn. I think women are more in tuned with I other women's no bodies. what she's talking about. And so I like the fact that and they... The the I like I get, in, I get aroused with them pleasing each other. Let's just keep it real. He can play games all he wants. Just stop it. I watch gay porn. No, you don't. Okay, then. But clarify. You, but, clarify. <laughs> but you, I want but, you to make sure that. But you don't watch porn. No. I don't watch porn. Y'all look at his face. Look at that camera. To everybody in that camera. Um, what a Bible at? Can I pull out the Bible? You can pull out the Bible. You gonna put your hand on the Bible? For what? To, to put your right hand on the Bible. And for what? To say that you don't watch porn. That you don't I, like I porn. Touch, I can touch the Bible and say I don't watch porn. What's wrong with that? That is blasphemy. No, it isn't. You know, I, I'm not swearing. I'm not, well, you need to swear. Swearing is a sin. We, I don't sin. <laughs> there are two types of people that watch porn. Those who watch it and those who lie about it. <laughs> and I'm sitting by somebody. What is the problem? I don't know what you're talking about. Next subject. The whole entire subject is about pornography. What next porn subject? <laughs> I can't believe that you're acting like this. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me go to my notes. We talked about the addiction. We talked about the fantasy of it. Um, experience, communication. How should couples communicate if, for instance, I like porn and I want to introduce you to porn. How would you suggest that the communication go for me to introduce okay, or for people so to introduce porn to somebody's life that's not I used to it? Hey, I got something I want you to get addicted to. <laughs> Be I'm serious gonna, now. I want to show you something that you get. You get. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, to introduce somebody to Something that can destroy their life. Let me think about it. Oh, um, Lord. <laughs> well, I'm just saying it. Uh, all right. So, I would say you shouldn't have to introduce nobody to nothing. Because if you just showed it to them, they're going to automatically. They've ever. I mean. No, no, because there are people who are who are not porn watchers who've never been exposed to porn. So, like, say, for instance, if I didn't watch porn. And it was not something that I was used to, never involved in porn, toys, or anything. And you as my husband, it's something that you enjoyed and you wanted to bring into our relationship. Well, how, would, how, 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 did you, how did you approach me knowing that it could possibly make me feel? Because the first thing I'm going to say is, listen, anything. the first thing I'm going to say yeah. is, am I not enough? Do I not turn you on? Why, why would you need this? Okay. That so, could be anything. That could be somebody trying to bring it up. Person We're not talking bed, about that though. That could be, that you want to bring another person to bed? No, I'm just no, I'm just saying. Just that's a that's the last show you just we just did. I didn't say nothing about bringing other people to the bed. Uh, another wife. Oh, that's true. Just, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so polygamy. Just, polygamy. We gotta keep you on track. <laughs> I, I, I'm drinking wine. I'm trying to keep you on track. Okay. How would you, how do you, what is the community, let's be, let's be serious about this now because there are couples, we may not have had that issue, but there are couples out there who have that issue, who want their partner to watch porn and be a part of their, their sex life, but how do you introduce that? Let me think about this. Don't think too hard. So how do you introduce? Well, I think first you got to start with a conversation. And make sure that the person that you're talking to feels comfortable and relaxed. And that it's a non-offensive situation going on. Laughing, talking, smiling. And maybe you can just say something like, um, Hey honey, I got a new album in the mail today. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go from there. I'm going to be serious about this. I think... You know, communication is so important in all facets of your relationship. And I definitely think if one partner wants to introduce something new, kinky, different, freaky, whatever, into the relationship, you definitely have to 
be sensitive and be careful because it can make another person feel as if um, there's something wrong with them. And that's not, that's not your intent. You just want to enhance what's already good. And even if you have issues in your sex life and you think that porn or whatever it is you decide to do will enhance it, you just need to have an open conversation and just make it clear that this is what your intention is and that this, you know, porn has been a part of my life here and there throughout, you know, the tenure of my life and it, it makes me feel this type of way. So if it makes me feel this type of way, maybe it can make you feel this type of way and we get together and just... Your addicts together. And just coexist in all this love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all this love making, which I don't believe in love making, what? but I'm just saying that for the podcast because I don't want to get into that conversation with him. But just enhance what we already got good going on. Because in relationships, it does get... I think that... Okay. I don't think this, that's necessary. something that you need to do. Uh, it's personal. It's a personal know, preference. Some, okay, I'm going to put it like this. There's women that get offended. It's men you, too. If you watch porn, period. Let's just be real. That's true. There's women that's, that get offended. They think it's disgusting and they don't agree with, with it at all. So I'm not going to tell nobody to, to just what you just said that can be. I don't think people to, think uh, it's disgusting. Well, some people do think it's disgusting, but I don't think that's the key thing. I think women feel it makes us that. it makes us feel probably a little bit insecure about ourselves no. because when you see those women <laughs> doing all those things and we're like, if this is what he want, I can't do that yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? It makes us feel intimidated about some stuff. I don't think it's that. Some people just find it offensive. They think it's, They don't think it's something that they want to watch another person. Okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the couple. I'm talking about the couple that you just said trying to introduce it to somebody. So now you're saying and that... it could be somebody that... that that don't go that route. They could be a so okay. Let's, let's that, talk. Let's that talk looks about in that a, in a religious perspective that says no. I okay. Don't wanna okay. Do that. I don't want to watch that. Okay. Yeah. So now, where do we go from here? You brought it to my. This this is a hypothetical situation. You brought it to my attention. I'm offended. I'm religious. I'm this, that, and the third. So how do we go from here? Because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking now I can't trust him because he watches porn and he needs this in order to be with me. So I'm having all these emotions. Well, that, that, when so where do we where, go from where, here? Where did it come that he needed to be with this person? They've been, they've probably been together. But my, okay. So my conversation is, I'm trying to help somebody who wants to introduce it into a relationship. You threw in That's another. Not you them. threw in. That is not helping you. Them. Okay, can we? Do you understand? I mean, I'm, you you were speaking like it is. It is. I'm true. talking about a specific situation. I'm not okay. talking about all situations. It's a specific scenario where a husband and or wife wants to say, hey, honey, I want to introduce porn into what we already got going on. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Uh, I just told you earlier what to do. You, you, you're, you're, you're fighting I'm me because you, I'm you, assuming you, that, that, okay, I see you serious about introducing this to, you. I want to introduce. I'm trying to help somebody. Okay. Because <laughs> pe cause people do deal with this stuff with one she's, spouse. She's trying to help. So I'm, <laughs> I can't, I'm trying to help you. What the fuck? What are we here for? We're trying to help somebody. Wait, wait, wait. She wants to help you watch this porn. So <laughs> I'm just trying to get you. I'm trying to get you on this porn tip. So let me let me get this porn tip out to you. Okay. So, what you do is you flip through the channels. Are you sticking in? See, stick, you to, uh, stick to this or, or turn on the internet and just uh, say, oh, look at this crazy. Do you see this? What is this woman doing? Oh my goodness, you see this? And that's how you introduce it to them. You just like, you being shocking off. Oh, it's the, it's the shock. Wow, look at this. Oh, so it's like you shocking them into. Uh, yes. Oh, honey, what's this? Yes, yes. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. Oh, what they doing? Exactly. Oh, God. That's, that's how you great. Do it. That's how you do it. You know what? I never thought about that. I never thought about that. That the shock factor. I never thought about that. It's like you run it, you going through the channels like, oh baby, what's that? You know, kinda like when you looking at girls' booties and you catch and I catch you and you be like, Who don't you like her boots? Kinda like that. No, that's not shocking at all. Cause you know you really looking at her butt. 
I'm gonna get the boots. I like the boots. I was trying to imagine how the boots will look on you. Yeah, okay. If they win boots. And if they win high heels or some tennis shoes. If I like their tennis shoes, I like their tennis shoes. Yeah, he be looking mighty harder than boots, y'all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> But that is a good, the shock factor, I, I never thought about that, but that definitely could work. It's like the element of surprise. You like, you come across something, it's unintentional, and it introduce, it comes across as you introducing it to both of you. And you both kind of like, and then that way you can get a feel of how the other person feels about it. They may say, whether well, it's him or her, say, mm, turn that nasty mess off. How they do that? That's interesting. And you both get to watch it. probably shocked what she watch. What she likes, you never know. That's true. Yeah, That's you know, true. you watch so, it since she was a kid. So the porn industry, I, I don't know a lot about, but I do know in, in doing my research for this podcast that one of the biggest things that kept that was being um that was be, was talked about was the fact of free porn and not free porn and the and that when you take advantage of free porn that you are actually robbing people mm. of stealing all their money. But yeah. Close off in front of the camera. Yes, you're it's almost like downloading a music, music a, a, yeah, a music album or a CD. Yeah, they're taking their artistic skills away from them. Yes, True. yes, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I porn. Now I don't know a lot about Pornhub, but I do know Pornhub has some free elements to it. Yes, they do. I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> And, but they say that, you know, do the right thing. If you are interested in porn, certain types of porn, go to the legitimate porn site and get a subscription and pay. Who is going to pay <laughs> for that? I'm just trying to do the right thing by the industry because I know I'm not, I, I would never be a porn star, but if I would, I would definitely would not want somebody downloading Look. and selling bootlegging my stuff. People nowadays are videoing themselves. Uh, and putting it out there. Now that's free. That's now that's and, legitimate and, free porn. And then they downloaded the stuff like this. Was this like our uh, Pornhub? Yes, that's like. Oh, is that what Pornhub yeah. does? Some of it. So it's like real people and real. Some, yeah, some of it, that's what I heard. That's what you heard. I heard about that. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and then they got some paid stuff on there. That's what I heard. The site. So <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You, you know, heard an awful lot. But somebody. Heard. Don't discuss porn. You heard an awful lot about know. this porn hub. I don't know. I heard about that. <laughs> I heard about that, that company. So pornography has has mm -hmm. is it has evolved over time. It's it's so much more realistic. It's it, and right now they actually do little skits and they do things to make it more like a production, a movie. It's tasteful. Um, it, it's respectful in a sense. Do you agree with that? I mean, do you think porn is just porn? It's, it's, it's porn. Um, you, some porn is just nasty and distasteful, and some is just really classy that porn. That goes back into fetishes, I would assume. So um, I think that like different genres of anything that's out there. Um, but um, I don't know. I don't know how to. Um, how you want to, you know, look at the subject? I, I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, you it's, know, it's fetishes. It's different. It is categories. different type of. It is different categories of porn. I right. definitely think porn. The porn industry has evolved. Not everybody is recording themselves in a back dingy hotel room, paying a girl a hundred dollars. You know, just to get their rocks off. They're actually putting some right. put some money behind the production. They putting money behind it. Well. No, I would say this. Um, I, if you ever looked at an old Tommy porn, it was a storyline to it. Most of them. Mm, I used to have, yeah. like, like you uh, would go into a. Um, it's some bad acting, I know that's that. some acting, and it was people, they were trying, it was the beginning of the industry, and they got even got shows out there on HBO and mm -hmm. Showtime about the, the industry. And they uh, they would actually try and break into the acting through that industry. Those were failed actors or actors that were trying to get get on the screen. So, hmm. So they used porn as a gateway that's to what be. That's what they was trying to do. Yeah. Some okay. of them did. There's one or two of them that done it, and uh, 
Who? 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 Uh, I forgot. You can look it up. <clears throat> there's so a, there's actually people now who are well-known actors and actresses they were well -known who actors. were porn stars. That right back in the day. Well, I gotta look that up. And um, and then uh, but but the uh, but nowadays you look at the stuff it goes straight into a sex scene or. That's how I like it. Know. I ain't got time for all that bad acting and yeah. pretending like you don't know what I'm here for, especially when you have naked. Why do you just meet people on the street? Just well. People do be on the street half naked, but I'm just saying, and then just had this conversation, uh, and then just unzip their pants, uh -uh. just get to the nitty gritty. So before we go on to the anonymous T, just do you think pornography objectifies women? Yes. So if it's objectifying to women, then why is it so popular with women? Because women are hypocrites. <laughs> Well, damn. <laughs> Honestly, I mean... Just like me, you know. Yeah. It's like human nature. They're hypocrites. In a, wait, wait, let me say this. Um, everybody has a... Uh, put like this. Sex is a private thing. So, a lot of people don't just get up. They may do all kinds of stuff at home, but they don't know. They're going to get around their wives or their other... No wise, but they gonna get around. Excuse me, they gonna get around their uh, their girlfriends, right? Or their homeboys, or their, their good friends at work, or whatever. And if they talking stuff, they gonna they're like, nah, I would never do that. Or I would never. I, you let him talk to you. Let you let her say that. Or you whatever it is they do, people say a whole bunch of stuff, but they do the exact opposite when they around the person. That's true. So. You know, and then it, I to, think to me, it's a private act. I mean, it's something like, I don't need everybody knowing my business. And, and, we, knows. and as women, we have choices. We make right. choices. And even though a lot of people do feel that women are being objectified in the por pornography industry, I, they, 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 they are, are. They there, are. There, I there agree. are women out there that, that would say that's disgusting or this and that and that. But then at home, they videoing themselves with their husband. I'm just saying. That's what goes on. So, and ladies, please stop doing that. Stop being the focal point of the camera with your mouth on the penis and you doing the tricks. And then when y'all break up, he released the video and make you look crazy. Mm -hmm. Let him show his face. Let him show his face between your legs. Let him be objectified for once because it just seems like it's always the women mm -hmm. who allow themselves. We talked about this on a podcast with Yasha and Pat. Mm -hmm. Well, Yasha and Pat, where we were talking about Black China, who was given oral and the uh the girl from love and hip-hop i can't think of her name who's to date ray j i can't remember her name boyfriend she was having all doing all kind of sexual kardashian. stuff kim kardashian even though it was a come up for her you know those days are over those kim kardashian come up days are over so stop doing these videos with these men with you as the focal point doing all these sexual things it's just ridiculous. I mean, uh, all that stuff is private. And you should not be doing those type of things with anybody unless it's your husband. And even when it's your husband, delete the footage. Y'all watch it. Y'all laugh. Y'all critique. Find a ways to make it better. Then delete the footage. Okay? Uh, there is no reason for you to keep footage of yourself having sex in your home. There's no reason. No reason. Um, you don't agree? I'm not going to say I, I, I agree with you, what you said, but uh, I'm going to say this. Um, I think women like being the focal point of the footage. They like seeing it. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. Good so man. I think that's why they are doing it. Uh, I can't dispute that because some of them want that type of attention. They think they, they, like, they like And you got the people like Safari who drop dick pics. When his album get ready to come out, now everybody want to buy his album and want a piece of him. And now he feel like he has to uh, absolve himself of sexual uh, conduct until he get married because he just feels overwhelmed with all this attention he's getting because he showed everybody his penis. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the anonymous T. I, I, you know, I, we were, we, we were, I, he was joking. I thought this was going to be a serious conversation about pornography. I Hopefully you were able to learn something from this. I mean, we talked about communication, how it affects the relationship, whether it helps the relationships or does not help the relationship. You know, um, it is a, it is a serious topic. It but, is addiction. Let me tell you, I'm gonna let you go to the numbers, Steve, so we can move this along. But I will tell you why it's jokingly to me because I do believe it's a private act. I I believe it can be harmful, so I don't want to just promote using pornography. And I want, 
And I want, because it's more people, it do damage to their lives and it helps them. So it's kind of hard saying how to introduce something like that to them. People have things that they're addicted to. And like you said, uh, sex is a big thing and sex can be damaging where people can't function or people have to watch it or... Mm-hmm. You know, they can get they go to they go from one thing to the next to the next to where they in the back alleys at a, at a right some, some little place doing stuff. You know, it so, is this unsafe. Right. So right. I, I just you. I'm just gotcha. not I, when I don't feel comfortable. I may joke about it when I don't feel comfortable about something like now, that. Now, now you guys know what I deal but, with. Anyway. Okay, been in a relationship for three years now. After a year in the relationship, the intimacy started to lack on his part. I came across one day on his iPad that he was watching porn. I knew he watched it when we started dating and as we both talked about it. I confronted him a while back and he admitted and said he had no idea why he does it and he would try his best to not do it. And we both talked and had a good conversation and set some boundaries. Since then, he has still continued to watch porn here and there. But now when I ask him, he is lying and said he doesn't do it. And I know he does. Now, my problem is not that he watches it. It's more that he won't be sexually active with me for a week or two, but will watch porn to self-pleasure. I will have a problem with that too, girl. I even told him in the past that I am willing to watch with him or have us role play some of the porn fantasy. Nothing crazy, though. I'm always turned on by him, so lack in sex for me is not an issue. The other thing is, the other thing he does is through the day he does a lot of sexual talk and not a sexual touching. Gets me all turned on through the day, but once, but once night comes, he doesn't do anything. But yet, when I am not around him, he watches porn. Not sure or why or how. Honestly. But I'm, I'm a bit puzzled with this. This is confusing. And so, any suggestions? Yes, and I have talked to him more more times about this problem. Thanks. So what do you think? It sounds like he's waiting on you to do all the stuff. If he's sitting there watching porn, he's looking at some woman be aggressive or that's coming. He's waiting on her. They're waiting see, on each see, other. See, so, see. so she's looking. She if, Does she want to do it? She no. said she said she she said she's willing to role play some okay, of the stuff with him, you, but he won't take her up on it. It's about role play. It's Porn about, is role play. It's, it's about reality. She Porn he, is not he, reality. He wants he wants well it's about reality and the fact that that's what he's looking for. That well she's that's looking unrealistic. For, she's looking for him to be the aggressor, to touch me, to come after me, to, to chase me, which is the norm of for most men to, to do that. But he may be looking for her to be the one to come at him and touch him and, and pursue him. She he oh, does. Right. She just if you listen to me, he she said, which I love the fact that he makes love to her mind all day and he gets that's her talk, but it does, and that's what we need. And then he gets her going, so she comes home thinking she finna get some. She go for try to go for it. He didn't already watch porn. I think this is a big issue. Why is it her fault? I'm not not saying it's about, I'm joking right there. But what I'm saying is this. This is why I don't want to promote, how I said said earlier, because (coughs) he could have an issue. He can have a problem. He does have a problem. And and there you go. Well, I I think this little habit that... He's more comfortable with his hand than he is with her. I think... You know. uh, this this issue, this something that he has been doing since before he met you has now become a really huge addiction. issue. It's an addiction. This is a porn addiction. And I think in order and to get past it, I think some therapy is needed. But first of all, he has to admit that there is an addiction that he wants to change some things. Because first of all, he can't expect you to be these people that he needs for you for you to beef in order for him to get off that's just unrealistic I, I that, that it is i'm just saying if that's the case that is so unrealistic and it's so unfair and i think you've been more than willing and open and and wanting to be a part of this journey with him watching it with him um role playing with him being a part of this fantasy and he has yet to include yourself to this is a selfish need thing for him that he needs in order to get himself off and you can't you can't do anything about this. No matter no matter how much cat cooch, okay, you throw at him, it's not gonna make a difference because he needs something 
more and whatever and you can't so don't feel insecure about yourself don't 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 judge him don't attack him but try to get him to say that this is a problem and he needs therapy to work his way through it to work you back into his life sexually where but you both he didn't, he may not think it's a problem but that's not well that's a, that's the thing that's not he's not be, he's not that's not going to be an easy thing to do so um it it would require more like you said, more conversation and just say, hey, you know, find out. She she that's us the question. What she should be doing is asking him the question. What can I do? She has. Well, what? How does how does this? How do we fit this in? How do we make this? You know, where it's not necessary, or how do we work this into our? Like, well, you know, it's it's hard, especially if one person is addicted, and this is clearly the way she. I, I haven't heard his side of the story, but the way she describes it, this is an addiction for him. So why don't you? And do this? Why don't you do this, young young per woman that that sent the the, the anonymity? Why don't you? Why he's watching it? Because he's lying about it now. Why, why he's watching? If he's watching, why don't you? Yeah, you get, you get the. How you want to say it? getting on get getting on him getting 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 you know I'm you you get it you get on him or get with him. Well, how, about this? how about yeah, how this? How about this? How about when he come home from work? You sit in the bed in your best lingerie with porn up on the screen. You laying in the bed. You got everything all romantical and stuff, and you just ready to just fulfill one of the fantasies, fantasies that you feel comfortable with fulfilling and just bring him into the room and, and just see you can't win girl he, he, he got issues <laughs> he got issues i'm sorry and this is not funny i'm not making light of this because this is a serious issue with a lot of people yeah, who right, cannot right. who mm -hmm. get so desensitized to the person that they're with because they're so addicted to point why a man would prefer a hand over a warm soft yeah. No, Wet no. place of comfort, no. I would never understand. <laughs> so, so, so I would say this, and and this is one thing women need to understand because they used to be, they used to a lot of young guys are just when guys are young they just full of testosterone and they ready to roll. Oh, they just ready to go like a rabbit. They just ready to go. What what y'all don't realize is that our our brains was, our brain stimulates everything. Mm. So our brain is just like y'all. Y'all got to get mentally turned on, so do we in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and whatever it is, he's found his own little happy place. Uh, yeah, but you know what? That's not fair to her. It's not. That happy place should uh, be. It should be room in that happy place for both of you. I definitely think some therapy is it's needed. It's the same way y'all women with these toys. <laughs> but. Okay, if you want to be involved with the toys, be involved with the toys. But y'all not going to like what we want to do with the toys. I'm just saying, that's the same way some women don't ever need a I, I, man. I have ne just... I've never known a woman being addicted to a sex toy and not wanting to have sex with her man. But I don't know that for sure. Mm -hmm. So I would do some research and we'll talk about that next week because I've never heard of that ever. And if you have, hit me up at <laughs> twithmonroe at gmail.com. Inbox me at Monroe Bishop. You catch me on Twitter uh, at twithmonroe. Where else? Facebook at twithmonroe. I think I have a um, on my Facebook page. I think I have on my Facebook page. You can reach me, Monroe Bishop, on all social media um, platforms. And let me know if you know someone, some woman who is addicted to sex toys so much that she can't give her man some pleasure. I want to find out who this woman is and I want to talk to her. She can pleasure, but she ain't going to really want pleasure from a man. She well, I want to know who that is. Well, you, you'd man, rather man. have, you, you can, you. And most of the time, she probably going to have no man because she don't need one. Well, then that's not a problem. It's, got, not, it's not a problem then. If you're single, if you single with your sex toys, what's the problem? If you're in a relationship, that's something different. So if you know somebody who's addicted, a woman who's addicted to sex toys and having an issue in her sexual relationship with her husband, her boyfriend, or whoever, let me know because I want to talk to her. Hmm. Okay? In the meantime, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode. This is episode 59, I think. Mm -hmm. 59. If it's not, I'll correct that. But right now, I think it's 59. We talked about pornography. And if you want to be a part of this conversation, hashtag TWM 
podcast on Twitter, um, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, and we can have a conversation about pornography and anything that we've talked about related to pornography. You can email me at twithmorrow at gmail.com, like I said before. Well, I definitely answer your questions. I, I do a quick turnaround. I get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime, keep watching me on YouTube, and you will find um, on YouTube, find my links to my podcast down below also subscribe and hit that bell uh, to get notifications when the podcast comes up and for those of you who enjoy listening more than watching you can catch me on apple Podcasts, um google, google play stitcher radio and uh soundcloud i'm on all those platforms so yeah definitely check me out all right and we're out <laughs> you out honey you gonna say good night good night good night let's go watch some porn <laughs> What's that? Hey y'all, I oh. got a great new album oh. in the mail. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's play it, play it. Go ahead. What is that? That's the old Let me see, let me see.